they can do that and like just hold their safe lane control, then you know Nigma has a map to play. If that doesn't happen, I think Gambit should be able to like control the entire map with Nog and just hold farm them. Gotta agree. Uh, pleasantly surprised the way Gambit drafted. They utilized the last pick, and uh, I don't think they have the answer for this, Nagasar. All right. Well, I, I love what you said to start off the panel. Just the idea of Gambit right now. Are they rising to the occasion after having an extra pressure thrown onto the players from the players themselves? We're gonna find out very quickly here if they're gonna be able to grab another upset as we jump into the second best of two of the day. And here we are, Gambit up against Nigma. It seems like Nigma trying to replicate some of their victory against VG Gaming with this, this Mars, this Ancient Apparition, but the panel, and I know you were saying that you really like Gambit's draft and the, the way they can play the map. Yeah, as long as they don't get smashed early, I think that they have really good ways to just keep the map, like, keep themselves hidden in particular, especially the Naga Siren. I think Dream, when he's playing with this team, he excels when he's actually not being forced to do too much. When I've seen him, actually, because I've watched a lot of these Europe and CIS games, yeah. when he's actually forced to get involved, he starts making these, like, these mistakes because it doesn't feel like he wants to be in these. I think Naga Siren actually fits perfectly the style that he likes to play. So he, so. Won't, he won't get flustered. He'll just farm and exactly. build himself up. And I actually, yeah, I mean, Aoi kind of kind of took it right away from me, but I think it's it's eyes on GH, this game, to solidify and secure these lanes because you look, and it's a Tusk Mars lane if he wants, does want to play around my yeah. control, which is, it's going to be a little bit hard for him to really do much of anything to actually play aggressive. Uh, so I want to see him play with the tri lane and just look at him the rotations. A lot of times the way that GH has been playing, especially with Miracle not playing the mid for them, he he rotates mid like four minutes, I guarantee you we see a TP. Four or five minutes, <laughs> GH is going to run mid, he's going to TP mid, he's going to try to make an aggressive play on the mid laner. And especially versus a hero like Storm, he could actually catch him off guard early on when he doesn't have that level six. You can yeah. actually look to set up a gank there. So eyes on GH really for this game and seeing if he does early early go for tri lanes and if he does go for like pulling creep waves because I think that's going to be the style at least in the bottom lane. For sure going to be a pivotal hero for them. And then a kind of a similar thing here for the next Assassin as well, right? He's going to be scouting out any movements that Nygma want to make because it is yeah. a very team fight focused draft around that Mars AA looking for those early engagements and we know Immersion how well he can do behind enemy lines kind of catching stranglers or, or smoke ganks there as an early rage from RLTW get rid of some of that damage coming through from Afterlife, but they've shoved this wave really hard already under Tier 1. Yeah, this is the Afterlife special. He loves playing the Viper. He always does it. I mean, it's pretty much the same thing. He always does Vipers, but this is a very comfortable feral for him, so he forces the wave in, and then they just start messing with the pulls. You yes. see the wards already coming out from both sides, so yeah, they've got it They've got it covered, and we're already seeing the pull. GH is starting to pull because he doesn't want to be this double melee versus Naga Siren. So he's going to start switching where the positioning of the lane is. Yeah, start manipulating that creep wave. And then mid lane there, we've got Lauren off up against Miracle. Storm versus Morphling, which the panel was saying, you know, Storm Spirit can potentially slightly outfarm the Miracle Morph, but yeah. then you've got the threat of that damage onto towers and the runes that Miracle can utilize to, to shove back into the wave. But uh, for the most part, you know, these, these mid lanes with water runes now are very much just farm trade heavy. Yeah, I like. I actually love seeing like the aggressive storms and Lorenov. From what I've seen so far, very aggressive player. So he tends to just always get yeah, electric vortex level three. Yeah. So he's gonna be able to try to bring it to the morphling if he sees an opportunity. Just pull him and even make him miss range creeps and stuff like that. It's, yeah. it's really high skill kind of matchup that you can take advantage of. So yeah, I is on Lorenov to bully Miracle a little bit here. Yeah, absolutely. Like, look down those side lanes. Yeah, BZZ. Trying to track back onto GH, like you were mentioning, just dragging these waves around and making things a little easier for himself. As Immersion already starting his nonsense, kills off RTW's courier with the boots on them. Huzzah! Yeah, actually, Kuro has actually started boots on the AA, something you don't see too often because he just stun. has to run. Yeah, ILTW is forced to actually rage and run away. This is a very tough lane right now for Team Nigma. Yeah, we start to see the CS from the Radiant team getting ahead of their counterparts for the most part. I mean, Naga Siren maybe consider her to be struggling a little bit, but that's uh, you know, more of an experience focused hero early days. CS will come naturally as the game progresses into 10, 15 minutes. She'll be given all that room to farm. So early laning stage, uh, you feel like Naga Siren, it doesn't not really important for her to have a good time down here, is it? Just dodge any kind of aggression from Nygma. Yeah, they're also, they're manipulating creeps so much, right? GH, that's the whole job as these four positions when you're double melee in this matchup. So you're going to miss a couple because he's going to get the pull behind. He's going to deny like two, three extra CS. So that's what a Dream is actually missing here. And he's with Mars. Mars is one of the better actual lane oh. heroes. And boom, 
Well, that Viper Nix, straight onto RTW. That, like, they're tipping him as well. Oh boy. Here we go. Well, they know. They know that if they get ahead in this game, this life stealer is going to have like no recovery Stupendous. period at all. He's in a very tough carry matchup versus Nagasarn, and he's versus Viper in the game. Like yeah. your, your whole game is going to be pretty terrible unless you get right on top of him to start off with like an infest bomb. Otherwise, you're just Viper Strike. Every single team fight, you're going to be Viper Strike. So. Yeah. And you're kind of stuck there. Yep. Well, it's something we didn't get a chance to touch on much, Radiant but you know, life stealer awesome. item build. You know, we, we've previously seen you know, the radiance, the battle fury. They're all they're all come and gone. Nowadays, are we expecting this armlet with a deso? What uh, halberd? What are we looking for 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 RTW this game? Because he needs tempo, doesn't he? Oh god. I mean, you need to go armlet, 100%. But there is a consideration. You just have to go maelstrom this game. You're playing versus Nagasar, and you need to be yeah. able to match core to core matchup at some point in the game. But it might not work so well with their draft. So we'll see. I think maybe he becomes he ends up becoming more of this like utility life stealer kind of in a way for the morphing to become the super carry. Mm. But yeah, already starting to fall. <laughs> decently far behind inside laning start. And GH, he is starting to check, as we said, you know, four minutes. There. There's GH, has to check the runes, has to help out Miracle a bit there because he's falling behind. So Lornoff will not get a refill on one of these water runes. Oh, there's lots of tips coming out. Kuro having a bit of a battle with him. Bottom lane though, mind control. He's all right. Mars slips away from the Naga. And that snap fire down. But juke the cookie. I think if the cookie actually lands on him, he oh, might yeah? die. Yeah, they cook in an illusion, landed right behind him. Oh. He like did the step forward to dodge it. It was a nice play from mind control. Well done by him. And GH, I mean, he's not going to accomplish much here. No, he can't. He's just wandering around, and this is what we we're saying. You know, during that draft, we, we love to see this Tusk with the Lash Rank, the DP, the ranged heroes that utilize the tag team. Of course, they wanted this mind control mark to set up team fights in that kind of period where the laning phase breaks down. I, I'm a bit surprised that he didn't actually try doing like in the first pull wave, you hit level two on Tusk and then you TP to the safe lane and you mm. just get a kill. Because Viper, very immobile hero, but if they start getting an advantage top, they're gonna chain oh. kill and watch this. Oh, got the AA. Yeah, stuck up there, emerging gets a stun into the oh, nether toxin. Oh. And another one comes through for afterlife. And is that earn charges for the Viper as well already? Yep. I think you have to, uh, honestly, I think you have to bring GH up here. A plus one in order to try to set up to get ILTW to get a kill onto this slower hero like a Viper. 320 movement speed. If you get three heroes hitting him with tag team, he is going to die. But so far, unable to get the foot get under, yeah. get their foot off. And learn off. he's going back to base. But he's level six already on Storm. So, so they can't actually set up for him anymore, where we might have seen a rotation if they did it earlier. What, what do you think the goal is for Storm now at level six? Is it uh, sort of hide in jungle, play fog and farm? Or do you want to see him TP rotate to get kills? I don't think he needs to rotate with the way that the lanes are going, right? I think this is a game where he can play his Greed, go for his Orchid, and then he's the counter to the Morphling completely inside of the game. So I, I think Lornoff can just play the mid lane, play the form. If he sees a rotation like being forced, if they're diving too far into the other lane, he'll go for it. Sure, he can TP, but I think he should just play his own game, maximize as much as possible. Yeah, it's definitely the ancient apparition is food for the storm spirit. And here's the yeah. move that you've been wanting for quite a while. They need this. GH. But He's TP top, but Afterlife has already managed to dip away from any aggression Nigma was bringing. And now you know Tusk is you know, TP top there. Mind Control's isolated down bottom. They're going to try to get an aggro play onto him. Huge creep wave going under, too. They're trying to connect, pull it. Oh, they get a bit of it and a catapult as they well. They get a little bit. The two range creeps going to follow through. Look at the split illusions there done by Dream, too, putting two illusions near the wave. Wondering if he was going to go for the deny. Won't be able to get it. Mind control. Up to level five. Not bad for the Mars when he's been kind of left on an island. Yeah. yeah he's getting something there. And Storm Spirit is starting to play the fog, as we've seen yeah. from Storms. You know, kind of farming small camp, medium camp. Get himself back into the lane to stop the catapult wave from Orphling from hitting his tower too much. And he's playing it very nice. That's a nice vortex. Oh, oh, he's missed hey. He missed Glitch. Oh, miracle. Oh. Oh, uh, he was trying to shift down stick and shift back up, but did not do the math. Well, you set the aggression from Lorenoff right now. That, that Vortex play back under that tower onto Miracle. Beautifully done by the Storm. Oh, boy, that's a big slip up. They can't have these mistakes this game. He stops the ass. He gets a kill on his counterpart, a solo kill. He's got a ton of gold, like, rushing towards that Orchid. He's going to have it real fast. And now he's able to cut wave mid, farm up a camp, and accelerate even faster. This is problems, for sure, for Nigma. Falling behind with this type of lineup is going to be very tough for them to recover, as they're countered in most of the actual matchups. It's going to be very reliant on my control getting some dream combo. So at least he's giving, he's having a decent start. Net worth, not so much, but his levels, right? Almost level 7 on the Mars, so he's going to be the big one to now bring them out of this very rough start for them. Yeah, get them out of the rut. Ooh. GH. He's also potentially got some vision here. Lornoff, he's stick charges. He's going to be able to zip past it. Yeah, he's fine. 
But yeah, you're right. I mean, in the second game up against Vici, it was very much down to mind control with those big arenas setting up the Ice Blast, the combos they're shot. GH. GH, he's in the wrong neck of the woods. Radiant Triangle, he scouts an Ancient Camp, but he's gonna get caught up by Immersion and Afterlife here. I and mean, he's tried to deny himself to the Ancients. Not successful though. Nyx Assassin will take him out. And Nyx is usually a hero that takes some time, right? You, like, your first year laning start isn't really the most amazing, but as the levels get online, this hero becomes one of the strongest supports in the game, and he's already having a great time. He's level three, he's got Tranquil's Raindrop, Windlace, he's gonna be super active around Oh, I see. And my control. Yeah, he's, he's okay. Well, I don't know. He's alive, I don't know if he's okay. He's having some struggles now. They've already got Medallion on the Snapfire. Oh, Plus wow. the minus armor from Riptide. This is a very tough lane for the Mars now at this point. Even though he has this chainmail, the Might's what? Armor is very effective as it will get the catch. Yeah, they will find that Snapfire. Pretty tanky hero, but still gonna get Radiant blown through. Line control on GH also take down the courier with a blade of alacrity on it. So oh, three. Nice. Losing out a bit of his tempo. And Storm Spirit. Try and get a bit of revenge here. Good attempt on the shards by GH, but Storm always able to close the gap back onto him. That's the first kill for Nigma though. Yeah, up on the board. A bit of a morale boost at least for them. I think Radiant's it's Courier. Courier is a nice thing too. It's going to slow down that speed because the Naga Siren was getting pretty out of control. Yasha was on the horizon oh. soon. Top. RTW rages away. Immersion. Thinking about that Impale, but holds it knowing he's not going to get any real follow through. Other thing about the Nyx in these type of matchups as well is Nyx, as we said, slow to start, but especially versus a hero like Lifestealer. Always Lifestealer has been like the king versus Nyx Assassin. You don't care about anything he does. You rage and just hit him, but yeah. Immersion having a very good start here. 2 0 1, sapping experience. Especially if you're the one making the first move, right? If you're on the back foot against Lifestealer, you're having a rough time. Mm -hmm. You're making that first move against, against AA, against Morphling. This Nyx Assassin, once he hits level 6 especially, could find some pretty nifty openings onto some of these squishier targets. This could be a good move here from GH, if he's able to get on Afterlife. Oh. He's got the shards. Yeah, he's trying to pour it up top. Afterlife, the Viper drop in, three heroes around him, and nine minutes in, almost 10 minutes in, they get that tri lane move onto the Viper at long last. <laughs> I do grab the hate stream for Lauren off top. As Nyx Assassin, the TP down towards bottom. Miracle's gonna force a ball lightning back into that creep wave. Not really a bother there for the Storm, though, as it Ooh. looks like they want to set up for mind control. Look at how fast that was. Immediately hides himself off of the mid lane and Radiant's instantly ports bottom for a kill. No Straight down station. there. And they've got the chain stones onto him. And he's a spin his arena. Mind control still going to spear up the Storm Spirit. Any backup? Nigma, where's the team? Mind control is left down here against four heroes. Didn't oh stand the chance. I knew Lorinoff was aggressive, but my god, instantly Radiant's makes the rotation with the haste to a miracle. Is capitalizing off of it, though, hitting the tower. GH also playing in the area in case anybody comes up. So Afterlife, he actually has to just let this one drop. So, you know, the move is good to at least punish my control, but at the same time, they lose an early mid tower versus a Morphling. Yeah, 10 minutes in that, that catapult wave. And they did swing three heroes back towards mid, thinking about trying to start a fight, but that leaves Immersion down on the low ground against the Morphling Tusk. Cookie to disengage. Oh, waveform forward there, Miracle. He's hunting for a little bit more there. Loranoff's low. The snowball towards the Snapfire will drag Miracle in towards that target instead. So they give up on the next. Get a snap. Great moves from GH. Sitting around mid, just literally being patient, waiting for somebody to show up there. And he knows that he is the kill hero with this team. They're going to give Kuroki the lane. Level 6, we see the AA blast. It's already going to the base. Is Lorenoff going to get killed by it? No. He'll be okay. He'll be fine. A nice try. Good attempt. He'll delay his, his move out of the fountain a little bit. I mean, net worth wise, looking like Morphling up at the top, Naga mm -hmm. not too far behind. We've got a pretty Radiant's tight grouping of heroes there. I think the surprising one for me is Lifesteal has managed to recover pretty tremendously out of that top yeah. lane. And he is just rushing Maelstrom. He's not even going to go for Armland, so he's going to try to counteract the Naga Siren Kuroki. Yeah, that's Emergence level 6, right? Finds the A8. And he's got Urn charges on him. Kuro, he's got the nice Infest save. Nice RTW play. races across with a face boost and the turnaround from GH. Good carapace, but next Assassin. And he's done for up there. Nice team play coming out. They tip Kuro. They're baiting them in. Making the calls. I'm yeah. baiting TP top. We'll turn this. Help! <laughs> it does mean now, you know, the, the kind of natural Radiant's movement for the Naga Siren. Ditch bot lane, move up the top for the tier one. Claim some objectives as Gambit. Uh, are Nigma ready to fight this? Are they going to bring the Mars top to, to start a battle here? He can. There is a TP coming out from Viper down bottom already with the storm too. My control might get caught off guard from this one here. Oh, he's not expecting it. No, yeah. not. Dream gets the tower top, the zip in onto bottom lane, is that Mars being caught down? He can he oh thought, my goodness. thought he could do a bit more damage to that tower, but with that nether toxin and storm's damage, is substantial. 
It's such quick movements coming up. Straight smoke. It's instant smoke. I love the what the what is Man Gambit is on fire right now with the way that they're making these early aggressive moves, really recognizing the style that they want to play with this with this early advantage that they have on the storm, just making Lornoff get very involved. And just letting Dream do his own thing, right? Just let this Naga play his own game. Yeah, it feels like wherever immersion is, there's action. Feels like the Nyx Assassin is the one making the go calls. Follow yeah. me, let's smoke, let's make these moves. Dream is left alone top though, which means Nygma snap into action onto him. And RTW out with a killing spree. Good move from Nygma. And now the smoke from Gambit is just going to be wasted. Immersion's going to be able to scout out some information. Oh, Miracle. Oh. He's shifting down. Can he get it? And what's Miracle at? 560. He's got a fairy fire. I don't know, man. Oh, he's Strength. being safe. He knows. Yeah. They're waiting for the zip, too. They see the storm walking over. Uh, he's got the start of the zip in. They've caught Miracle they out. Chain stunned beautifully. Absolute perfection in from Gambit. And Storm, he's going to ball lighting himself away. So not even a chance to catch with a, a snowball or an arena. Can they get a merge in, though, for it, perhaps? I'll try. He's got Carapace and the arena there with a spear, but in come the kisses. The counter initiation from Gambit. They blow up the tusk, mind control. He's going to back himself up that ramp, get to the safety of the staircase. But you, you need these arenas to be really landing and getting you kills right, because he's mind control's the main guy. He, how much did he actually end up absorbing there? He absorbed the spear, he absorbed the damage from the punch. Just the carapace alone absorbed pretty much everything there. If he didn't get it off at that exact moment, he's dead. They would at least get a return kill, but yeah, great carapace from immersion. Yeah, this is a beautiful next game. Beautiful next game for sure. And ILTW, as we said, he's recovered, but every single one of these arena bloods that don't connect, that's kind of just going to slow down the pace completely from Nygma. They need to have these successful, because if you look at the side of Gambit, they are not nearly as cooldown reliant. That's, that's a minute you're letting Naga farm, basically. Yeah. But they got the Naga. That is the important thing. Yeah. Dream did get picked up before all that started, which was a very big one Radiant's Enigma did need. Is under attack. Now another tower. Yeah, more flink down to bottom. Radiant's He's got, him, has got himself the ultimate orb. Just He's... a recipe away from Mountain now. Exactly. Lornoff already has his orchid, so this is the timing here for Gambit to keep looking for plays, keep looking for any type of aggression. Nygma knows this. Look how they're sitting behind. GH and Kuroki at the ready to protect Miracle. Very, very defensive. Patiently wait behind you, carry. Yep. And here comes Immersion that again. Another go tower. call. Follow me. I will lead you to kills and action. And he'll try and scout them out. He'll see GH. Do they have any sentries? There's no reveal. Oh, far right. Yeah, it's further off to that side. So they go on the Morflake straight away. Free tank in a snow great snowball. Ice Blast turn around under the storm. Blow him up. Ooh. The streak taken down. And Gambit not bringing the numbers this time. Immersion might even get cut that's apart that's here that's as the Mars angling towards him. And Immersion's out. Just instant reaction from GH. If they maybe had stunned from the opener, you know, I think Immersion, he wanted to get that little bit of extra damage. If yeah. they just stunned, perhaps they actually can get the follow-up for the kill, but yeah, just too quick there from GH. And now Manta's done. So that was your big move to make with the Orchid. That was One the window. can react, yep. And Kuroki being sneaky, getting deep wards down too to see and be able to predict and, you know, Dyer's prepare yourself for these Orchid attack. movements, having the mm. Tusk in particular sitting behind that Morphling. They'll see these moves coming now. Yeah, I mean, it very has much been smoke after smoke from Gambit, so if you can yeah. spot one of those out. Vision and Intel, important for Nygma here. And they do ready themselves around that bottom rune spot. There we go. Afterlife with Boots of Travel. Yeah. Viper, super immobile hero. So you always want to be able to join to these fights as you know oh, they're going to start getting kind of split up. Back onto the next, they want to squish this bug and get the pest out of the game. It's blown up Immersion, but in comes the Storm. Looking for the Ancient Apparition. He's got heals, he's got saves from the Life Stealer. Kuro, he's barely dying, but it's taken Storm everything he's got to find the killers. BZZ, taken out by RTW. And Nygma on the retreat now with a little Vortex onto the Tusk. GH under that damage from the Riptide and Nether Toxin. Radiant two for two, all things said and done. I mean, all the support's dead and all the cores running back to farm. Man, I love active Dota. My controller with the farm during the meantime, he's got his blink. It was spotted though. I believe that this courier actually did see the, uh, this ward saw the courier coming out with it. So they should be aware that he does have blink dagger for the next ones, but some good aggressive moves from Nygma. Being able to punch back with this Manta style more fling. They're getting the lifestealer completely back in the game as you were mentioning earlier. Had a tough start, but he's four and one. His infest saves have been Pretty top notch so far. Yeah, onto Kuroki every time as well, right? Because they're, they're yeah. jumping the AA, you know that's your squishy target, the food for the Storm and the Nyx. So if RTW is ready and waiting for it, get straight into the Ancient Apparition. 
And BZZ, he's, he's got a lot of work cut out for him as the position five of this game against Kuro, and he's got a lot of de-warding to do. He's got to try and figure out what Nigma are up to. Sneaky wards too, as we mentioned earlier. The yeah. one that you put deep past, the, past that tower, that's one that almost never gets de-warded. And the sentry, it's not going to catch it, the one that they placed down there, so. Oh, hello! They find the next assassin under a sentry ward. Try to blow him up, and that's Morphling finding yet another kill. Kuro during the DPC, I think one of the things that we did critique a lot of the times was the vision. They'd be actually quite lackluster on vision. This game so far that I've seen, he's been really top notch with them. Sneaky wards, sneaky sentries too, being placed down to be able to watch these Nyx's movements. And it's all in the, like you say, the places that they need to be moving towards or where they know yeah. the Gambit are going to be coming from. And what, what's the next goal really here for Nygma? You know, we're thinking about so Roshan, or is it going to be aiming towards that, that Radiant Triangle area? Nagasaur, and you're hunting for her? I think you can still just hunt whoever you see on the map if they're not playing that Force game, where we, we were talking about with like, what the panel was saying too, where you shouldn't really see heroes on the map so much from Gambit, mm. if that's the style that they want to go for. So if Nygma sees anybody, I think they can just go for it. If they have the lanes in a good position, they can look for any type of fights with this big Mars AA combo. That vision that they still have, they know exactly where yep. all of Gambit is right now. They know that there's three or four heroes positioned around here. Immersion, he's gonna sneak through Vendetta. Maybe this, reveal. Maybe this can get something done. And CGH. Immersion. And we're gonna start on mind control here. He's thinking about it. Animation cancelling the stun. He's so scary. Miracle under a sentry ward as well. Invis Morphling, in comes the arena. Mind Control starts it off onto BZZ and they just blow up the snap fire. Grandma's gone. Miracle just walks straight back out. Nigma, the speed at which they jump in, find that pick. But the, the question's gonna be your next objective. What do they get from it? Dyer's middle tower has another camping. kill. They're just camping. They right want to get another here. kill from it. Yeah. yeah, they're gonna get some chain kills going. Snowball save beautifully done by the Tusk yet again to get Mind Control away from the Viper. Infest is gonna allow him to stick around the bottom lane for the tier two. I mean, Dream did get a tower mid and he's, he's pushing out multiple waves, but Nigma, that tight five-man unit looking really strong. 11-11, they've completely evened it out and Gambit not really knowing how to slow it down at all. They're going for the Kaya here onto the Storm Spirit next, but very squishy, very vulnerable now on all three cores. They can't actually show their face versus anything of Nigma unless they get the initiation cleanly from this Nyx Assassin, who's just, it's not happening. Let's stay in bottom. Dream, he's, he's songing. Ooh, let's see if he can catch him. He's setting up for it. Two heroes caught up in it. Now, what's the follow through going to be? The Cookie, the Stun, the Nyx Assassin gets speared back, but he still catches out by control. There's that Ice Blast, clips on the Dream, but Ancient nice. Apparition so blown strong, up. So Nicely done from Dream. That's a statement of intent by Gambit, right? Five heroes, song set up. We're coming to clear you out of our jungle. And they got the D ward as well, too, which was important. That one ward was being pretty frustrating for them. And they're going to be able to claim their outpost back, which very important at this point in the game. So early that they would have lost it. Lornov definitely needs a BKB yes. next item. I think this is going to be most appropriate. And I'm, I'm actually thinking maybe for Afterlife, he might have wanted one too, but he's actually committed Atos. Oh. So he was going for the pipe build after bots, but going for Atos makes sense. You know, your versus like this Morph and Tusk, and even versus Mars can be pretty effective. Keep them in that nether toxin. Yep. Maybe a uh, nice little setup for the next exactly. stun. I think that's the other thing too. They are lacking a little bit of catch in some situations where it can't just be immersion. Because yeah. they'll walk in under a sentry and just die and then they're missing a hero. So, so I do like that they at least have a secondary form, but no, definitely it's... needs a BKB soon to be able to counteract versus the big Mars ult. Oh, Miracle is uh, Naga Siren now. Yep. G and they have a DD. Oh, do they? They do. Into the road pit we go. Uh, uh, wondering what that next objective would be for Nygma. Uh, 21 minutes in, it's they a big man. so fast with the tag team with the Riptide too. It's gone. It's dead. They can't do anything about it. Not a chance. Radiant scan, but missed out on the road pit, I think, there. Oh, Saw the big green circle. So yeah, he just grabbed up by Miracle and they're jumping into high ground towards the triangle. There's the punch from GH. Kiss is going to land in onto MC, but RTW has the rage. Gets straight through the lava. Clears through the Nyx. And Miracle can just stand his ground and battle the illusions. And he's about to have E-Blade. So now your, your supports, uh, who have been already proving to be pretty squishy, even more so versus this. And it's going to be tough for you to actually target and burst anybody, because that's not really what their draft does anymore. The Kisses, since it's a 5 position snap, it's only level 1. Their burst damage is quite lackluster now on the side of Gambit. Nigma, they'll kill anybody they go on Dying every single time with this AA, with this combo. So do you reckon the Nagasarans, uh, the insurance plan, is, is it going to come to fruition here? Do they have enough time? Oh, it's, it's definitely looking a bit scary. The Morphling not being able to always turn into her as well, too, is is problematic. Well, Lauren off reckons he's so strong. 
see what he gets up to. <laughs> Storm Syrup is back in Fountain. Going to have to try and regroup there with the Snap and the Nyx Assassin. Probably wanting to smoke across the map. He's going to need a pretty explosive BKB timing. Like once he gets BKB, he needs to get like two to three kills plus, and they need to get some massive map advantage because they're really starting to fall behind right now. Dream getting away from the Spear. Arena from Mind Control holding Naga inside. The Ice Blast, it comes through and clips the Naga, but in comes Nyx Assassin. Life Stealer there, munching away, and Aaron Dream's uh -oh. gone. Nygma holding onto their own triangle while the rest of Gambit nowhere to be seen. Dream's only died twice this game, but both deaths are so impactful. The positions that he's gotten caught off in from Nygma, he's he's nowhere near his team. They yeah. can't help him at all. So he's just dead to these type of aggressive plays, and it's a lot of time off the map for this Naga. And GH just keeps on chasing Immersion here. Already spent the carapace, so that means Miracle is opened up for an adaptive strike. Oh, we have Immersion. He's popped his wand, trying to get into the fog and run away. GH, gonna think twice about going any deeper. I'm so strong, guys. I'm so strong. Does have that blink dagger, though. And do we have the Mjolnir? It looks like ILTW is going the full counter build versus the Naga Siren, so it really does feel that Nigma is in perfectly fine condition here. Only one, I mean, less than 1k gold behind, but that doesn't matter at all with the way that they've itemized, the way that they've played now, too. This, this Morphling is by far the strongest here on the map. And yeah, I think it's a lot of pressure now on Lorenov. Yeah, what, three minutes? Over three minutes remaining on the Aegis of Morphling. Mm -hmm. That's going to be tier two mid, maybe even the entirety of the top lane. And this smoke, if they get a couple of kills, the, yeah, the net really closes in around Gambit and shuts them out of the map because they've been, they've been playing wide open map and now it's going to get real tight here as GH will start the jump onto Viper with the spear. The Viper didn't stand a chance in his own high ground triangle as Emergent trapped in the shot. And yeah, they've got the dust. The reveal comes and even Arena to secure the next Assassin. Miracle, like you said, in that Naga form with these illusions shredding through people so quickly. Oh boy. They are unable to really make any type of initiating moves themselves at all now. Nigma having the double blink daggers as we saw GH picking it up quite some moments ago when they catch the Naga down bottom. Now Ooh, they can just start running over. Now they'll get perhaps my control at least. Okay. I do get the Mars, but that leaves Lornoff oh. needing to use the BKB defensively and he's spent all his mana. So he can't even TP. It's on cooldown. BCC is going to be the target now. They go towards RTW. Kuroki. I didn't have any stun. He's still getting chased. The Storm. The Storm. Oh, you're right. GH has got the Oh, Miracle boy. finishes him off, and Storm's first BKB seemed worthless. Dead for a minute now as well, and he's still got his Aegis for two minutes on Miracle. So what's that? Tier 2 mid, control triangle, think about the rest, yep. of, the rest of the map for yourself. Definitely control the triangle. Just sit on this high ground here as now there's... Man, it really just feels like there's nothing that poor Gambit can do anymore. They got these good timings early, but then nothing started to happen. Nigma just catching a couple kills off guard. Catching the Naga Siren once or twice has been pretty massive for them. And it's just easier for them to initiate. Yeah. Immersion, how many times now have we seen him just like Vendetta running around? He can't actually go on anybody. He gets dusted, sentry, and yep. he, he dies. Right, so, you know, something the panel's brought up a couple of times is that ease of execution. <laughs> Enigma, like, like we said, game two against VG Gaming, pretty similar draft they had there, so they've yep. already warmed up and practiced with this kind of this kind of lineup team fighting, whereas Gambit is much more nuanced how they want to, you're, you're explaining the kind of wave pushing and splitting out of the map. It hasn't been able to happen. You know, Enigma's just grouping up, always expecting the movements first, so they're catching these heroes when they're trying to do that sneaky wave clear as Dream's Courier also gets taken out here. Nothing on it, fortunately. And, yeah. They actually do have the song here to try to catch. There's Any vision? Two. He can't see anyone until he walks straight in on top of the AA morph. i will try and jump the Kuro AA, but the snowball save buys time as RCW gets back onto Dream. And then a strike onto the life steal, but he's going to invest back in the morph lane. Aegis stern hands around 45 seconds, so Morph wouldn't mind dying here, honestly. And that's it. Gambit have nothing left in the tank. They've spent everything. They get no kills. And Nigma just going to full hard reset and go again. I can't believe they don't even get Kuroki. Again, just the double bailouts. I think the Infest plus the Snowballs time and time again. Nigma on point with these saves. And they don't have a good combo. This is the next point I actually was going to get to is sometimes we see these Naga Sirens able to work so well because you have some like black hole, black hole, yeah. something like an egg on top or something like that. They have nothing. Their, their combo is pretty much just Nyx Assassin runs in and tries to stun. And then kisses on top. Yeah, it's yeah. very, Radiant very delicate top. way they want to start these fights. And it really feels like they have two five positions now at this point because mm. how slow Immersion's game has gotten. 
They have a level 11 Snapfire, level 11 Nyx Assassin, who can't really contribute too much big into the team fights in comparison. And you, you were very clear when you talked about that Stormer's BKB timing. Well, hang on a second, Immersion's running forward again. They are desperately trying to start the, the fight wherever they can, but MC, BKB Spear, back onto the Nyx, and comes the Ice Blast combo. Immersion, Carapace, and Cookie. Get them a bit of distance away from Nygma. A turnaround from Gambit, maybe here onto Miracle. Ball lighting into the Arena Cup, but Miracle BKB up himself, turns into the Naga, they lose the Mars. Nyx by back as well, but there's Morphling, he's shredding him. There's not much Gambit can do against it. It's a good stun for Immersion, but the rest of them on the run. Dream has been left isolated yet again. Punched into the air, and GH brings it back down to the wow. ground with a bag. That is actually so crazy. So he's doing the, he turns into the illusions and then shifts into more form so that they're ranged illusions. So he has these ranged Morphlings. He, <laughs> he has four Morphlings in the fight. <laughs> and Snowball back onto the snap as well. Oh, pgg has gone. Three heroes dead without buyback, and Nygma have taken an absolute stranglehold on this game now. Did they even get a, Did they get at least one kill? They got the Mars. They got the Mars. But yeah. That's, again, that's these BKBs just to get these My one kills. This poor Storm Spirit can't actually get onto any. Too many saves. It really is too many different defensive aspects on the side of Nigma that they're they're using beautifully. They really are. These infest. These snowballs have been on point. And now it's like you go for this aggressive move with the Nyx, and you're like, oh my god, wait, they both have BK. <laughs> the Morphling and the Mars have BKB, and it's a built-in rage on Life Stealer, so <laughs> you can't do much of anything. So we have to do something. We have to do something. But what, what can we do? Yeah. Running limited on options right now. I mean, this, this, I mean, Morphling versus Nagasar, now it's just looking very more favored. It just, I mean, if I ever see this matchup again, I'm probably just going to immediately side with the Morph, too. Just, <laughs> you just turn into the Nagasar, and you have four Morphlings, and then you Manta, and then you have, like, seven Morphlings. So many Morphlings. Well, six, whatever, but still, it's a lot of Morphlings. That's a hell of a lot. Yeah. And now they've just continued to control this triangle during all this time, yeah. too. And I like what my control is doing, right? Pushing out bottom lane, making sure the Dream doesn't have easy access to, like, tier two, mid, or bottom yeah. lane. No way to get out and cut the waves. Gambit's not being allowed to play the draft the way they want to at yeah. all anymore. Now the, the map is completely closed on them where they want to have, they want to be the ones actually in this position where they're the ones forcing the waves out without showing anything. It's actually just Nygma doing that themselves now. It's like the worst place for Naga to be is in her own base. Dude, pushing these, out waves with illusions. Look at these Morphling illusions. Look at them go. Top wave. Um, all right. Three Morphlings. Going to clear that one out in no time. Did, look, did, look, look at the damage they do. Yeah, it's actually pretty insane. Oh is that what John, I don't know, think like is it worth buying Diffusal Blade on Morphling when you're when you're up against the Naga Siren like, like this? Get even more damage out. He doesn't need it. <laughs> no point in deviating from what works. Yeah. Dream is getting out to the other side of the map, getting getting close to getting another item perhaps eventually, but it really feels like this like the Viper in particular, Afterlife, his game has been just disappeared. He's just been where has he been, right? Like where's the Viper been? I don't know. After laning phase he was had this excellent game, but he's just a boss. He's a pipe, he's an Atos, but he's three, two and three. He's part of six out of the 15 kills in the map. Yeah, it feels like it comes back to that kind of 13 to 16, 17 minute window where mm -hmm. you know, the Nyx and the Storm are grouping up as a pair and everyone else, again, you're playing wide open map, giving themselves up as targets for Nygma. Maybe if they'd you know, gone as four or tried to group up a little bit more and left just the Naga alone, they could have got a bit more out of the map as Dream. Oh, does have a bit of backup here He's around her. Nyx Assassin can help out, but the Arena oh. Spear Ice Blast coming in off the Dream. The Son of Sir are not going to help you. He's dead. Dead to Miracle with a double kill on that mole flank. GH, as we said, one to watch this game. 19 of their kills are because of oh, him really? so far. Yeah, he is 19 out of 23 kills. His blink dagger came super early too, and he's he literally has been reading the map perfectly so far this game. This Tusk on point level 17, same level as his offlane Mars. Yeah, he's all, here. all over the place in a good way. Yeah, everywhere. Up in the faces of Gambit, and again, and we make this move as Nygma right straight down the mid lane. Look for the tier 3. And Miracle, he's got illusions, he's oh, got yeah. Mantas. Once the Naga comes up, he's gonna have more illusions. <laughs> this game has gotten to the impossible realms now. Oh, jeez. Yeah. Tier 3 barracks, they just cease to exist. Disappearing under that structural damage from Nygma up towards the top tier 3 as well. And Gambit, oh, they need to pull something out of the hat here. Something drastic has to happen to stop the onslaught, stop the bleeding. Kisses will delay this inevitable push to kill the illusions, you're right, Fogged. They got him. They got the illusions, but the racks... Oh, it actually survives. 80 HP, okay. Dyer's bottom tower. That feels bad. Kisses to kill some illusions. And Roshan's alive, so it's kind of perfect timing for Nygma here. And, it, I mean, is this a move that Gambit wants to make towards... Can they, they make to. it fast I, enough? I, I mean, they're just gonna have Roshan to try. Roshan's already dead! Oh, no. 
They're moving across. There's, there's Dyer Ward. Yeah, you're right. He's going to get straight on top of them. Dodges the run of Atos 2. And in comes Mind Control with the Arena Review. Spear trying to aim onto the Viper. GH is silenced and netted, though, so the Tusk will fall. But Age is already gathered up by Miracle. And a song used defensively here while Rage and BKB straight towards the Naga Siren. Force out the Manta. Any kind of illusions to play around with. But Dream's going to get chased down here. E Blades. He misses. Yes, off a nice cookie as well. BZZ buys the space. And Dream, he does escape. But uh, the cost uh, is dear. And oh. Kuroki has found BZZ. He's trying to drag. He's trying to get to the wave. He wants to kill before they can actually push. Oh. Can get that wave. Oh, he cookies backwards. Oh, he's going to kill. He's going to kill Kuroki. Oh. No. Saved by the spear. And in comes the cavalry from Nigma. He tried. It was a good effort. Uh, good, good idea. Good plan. Not working out for him though. Again, every time it's just they're getting jumped on. GH does eventually die this time, but he ball. did his job. He saw, he gave all the information for his team to get the perfect jumps onto the heroes. And now into the base to finish off that Rex. That was 80 HP. Now there's an AC as well on ILTW. And of course, he, we didn't mention because it's been getting kind of quick, but he gets one of the better items versus Naga too. Cloak of Flames on oh, Lifestealer. So that's great. They can just end this game. They're unlikely though. They're on tier fours, yeah. All right, a glyph out from Gambit. Try and get the Snapfire alive, and she'll have kisses when she respawns. It's just a struggle to see what exactly Gambit can do to start a fight, extend the fight to the point at which they can get more than just one kill. Because Nigma have so much. I mean, they're just ending it. So they gotta do something. They're gonna try. I mean, Miracle just don't get thrown. He killed the throne. I mean, there's no glimpse. It's only gonna save it. That game's over. Nigma take game one against Gambit. I mean, it's a